So the last big Java concept we're going to be looking at for now are functions. What functions allow you to do is essentially reuse a piece of code in different places so you don't have to rewrite it. That saves a lot of memory and is just so makes programming so much easier for you. So this is how functions work. They take a couple of declarative statements such as public, static, void, etc. Um, so public means that it can be accessed from anywhere in this class. Don't worry about what classes are for right now. That's not important. Static means that it belongs to the main class. Void means that it doesn't return a value. And for now, you really only need to worry about the keyword that goes right before the name. So that can either be void or a data type. When a function is void like this, that means it doesn't return anything. I'll show you what that means right now. So let's make a function that returns an integer. And to do that, it has to take an integer as an argument. You don't have to declare this anywhere. This is specific to the function. So it just goes in here. Now, when this value gets passed to the function, you use it inside the function with this variable name. And as we remember, this just adds one to whatever my int is. And then because it's we chose integer as the value as the type it's going to return, we have to return an integer. Now with this, because it returns an integer, you can call that as a value and use it whenever you use this function. So the way you do that is like this. Let's get rid of all this stuff. So we can go we're going to pass the value 4 to it. Let's execute this and see how it goes. And as you can see, it returned 5. Now you may still be a little confused about how this works, so I'm just going to do a couple more examples just to show you what functions are. So let's see what happens if I make this void. And as I've stated, void means that it's not supposed to return anything. See, you get an error. You can't return something when the function is listed as void. Let's make it a string, see how that works. And because of that, we're going to have to change the argument to string. And just so you know, you can take multiple arguments. I'll show you that in a second. This is a good time to show you how string concatenation works. So string concatenation is essentially just pasting a couple of strings together to make a different one. So we're going to do this now my string, which is the string that the user passed right here. That's what will be passed in when they call the function. So what this is going to do is going to take whatever is passed to this function, whatever string it is, and add the word high to it, or a space, and then high. And we're going to return my string. Now let's change the name of this to return string now.
Let's execute this and see how it works. Oh, sorry, my bad here. I guess I accidentally tried to cast this to an int. So make sure all your data types match up with each other. As you can see, it adds the word high onto it. Now, if you have a void function, you can still use it to perform actions, but you won't be able to assign anything to what's returned from it. It'll just be something like this. Remember, you can't have any arguments like that when it's void. Or you can have arguments, you just, nothing's gonna get returned from it. So let's go. We just have to do all the printing or whatever you want to do inside that particular function if it's void. We're going to call that from the main function, which runs whenever the program is run. When you execute that, it prints the same stuff out, but it does it from the function. So that's a nice little introduction to functions for you guys. After this, we're going to start getting into more Android specific things, such as displaying stuff on the screen, changing stuff on the screen, showing messages, and a bunch of other cool stuff. And then after that, we'll get into our final project.